what do you do on a day off? If you have a day off, how do you relax? Do you have any? Like, I, I find hobbies? it very difficult. I find it very difficult. I'm not a big fan of it. Mm. Um, you know, it's, I kind of look at it like I'm either I'm either on the road working or not. You know? uh, and certainly, when we have a day off near Toronto, uh, the knee jerk reaction is just to go home, and that really kind of throws everything off. You know, because <laughs> I forget things and. Um, but yeah, day, days off are, are hard. I, I, generally, it's a lot of just vegging out, you know, mm. just turning things off. But I'm usually, I, you know, I had a day off near Toronto and I, and I was plucking around on a 12 string and I was like, ooh, that's a good idea. And I just started recording all these little things and, you know, uh, yeah, so it's still, it's kind of the same thing. I'm just, I'm just playing time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Always up to something. Yeah. Okay, I gotta check my notes now. Okay. Tom Hanselman is one of the fans who wrote in and he said, we'd all love to have Big Wreck in our living room. Are there any thoughts around recording anything from this tour for a DVD? YouTube slices only go so far. Yeah, um, no. It, no, it hasn't really been discussed. It would be cool. There was uh, some of these shows, on this run, I've been in some beautiful theaters, uh, and we, at, at, at least in Canada, we, we brought uh, we brought along a wonderful lighting guy who's a, the most enthusiastic, like, just into it lighting guy I've ever seen in my life. And and you know, that's always nice because it's an, another it's another element to the show. It's something that I've never really given much thought to. I'm always and then, then if I go see another show, it's like, wow. This is like, you know, even if the band sucks, look at this, right, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh -huh. So, you know, even if we suck, we'll have great bites. Uh, and and <laughs> an old producer friend of mine, <laughs> like, what'd you think of the show? And he said, you look great. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think uh, I, I, it, it would have been nice to film some of those, because so I, I check out the YouTube stuff every now and then, I try not to read the comments. But I, I'll check it out, and uh, and I was just like, wow, because you never know what's going on behind you with all this. Um, yeah, it looked brilliant. I'm like, well, we should have shot something. I, I know it's expensive and all that, but, you know, maybe next time. Awesome. And you do have a lot, a lot, lot, lot of U.S. fans. So they are asking if you're ever going to come down a little further south or maybe go I would a love out to. west. I would love to. We were telling Kelly, our driver, it's just like, just keep going south, dude. Going, finally end up on the beach. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I would love to. I think it's you know it's it's hard for us to, to play down here just just financially. It's mm. just to keep keep it going because um, it's not the kind of show that you can get into a van and just go do. You know, and we're not 21 anymore. Yeah. So that, you know what I mean? That doesn't. That's not going to cut it. So you're going to have expenses, and tax, and, and bus and you gotta keep it fueled up, you gotta tell them to. Um, so that, that gets pricey. And you know, truth be told, we do have a lot of fans, but there's a lot of people down here, you know what I mean? Like, this is, a, <laughs> this is a, a huge country. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, and there's, I loved doing it back in the day because it was, every gig was like two or three hours from the next one. Oh, yeah. You know? Gotcha. There's so many spots to play. So I did, I did, at the end of it, I think it's probably just come down to a, another band taking us out, and, and then it's a matter. Of, it then it's a matter of finding a good fit, like who would be the right fit, and that's a whole other discussion for another day. You know, the Facebook people can get on that. <laughs> you know. Natalie Cumston says, "Why did they release Come What May in the States, but will not play it in their shows in Canada?" Well, that's that's the grown-ups. That, 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 that's a grown-up decision. We have played it. I was actually thinking about that the other day. I was like, we should play that too. Uh, it's just a, that's just a matter of crafting the set um, and how and how we crafted the set. There's there's tunes that have come and gone from the set. And, uh, I like to look at the set as a show, you know. Uh, and it, it's just hard to fit that one in there. It was hard to fit it in the record, to be honest. Um, but I think that was a like a rounder. Decided that it was it was a little a, a little more how would I put this like a little more normal than something like 
Ghost is a little more off the beaten path mm -hmm. to start with, but we already have a, a, a bit of, we've established a bit of a, a foothold in Canada. People at least know who we are and, and we can maybe get away with a little more. Whereas in the States, it's like people probably wouldn't remember things like the Oath and that. So, um, we. That's my ringtone. Oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've got R2D2. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, you know, I, and it makes sense to me. I mean, I, I, I try not to dwell too much on the business side of everything, but um, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. It's, it's a little more palatable than, than you know something that's a little more what we would want to do. You know what I mean? It does make sense. Nah, I'm not saying I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote the thing, so, <laughs> but it, you know, I get it. I get it. But no, there's no real reason that we're not playing it live other than just the, the sort of construction of the set and the arc of it and how it's, how it's going. Do you have a favorite food? Um, yeah, it's sort of a revolving door. Of um, you mean like type of food? A type of food or a dish? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty plain Jane to be honest. Yeah. I get to every time we order dinner and it's like we have a little sheet that we fill out and we look at a menu and just like checking the salad. <laughs> it's kind of how I <laughs> kind of how I roll. That's just sort of the safest thing. I can look at it. If it's not pink, I'll be good. You know? <laughs> Alrighty. Do you have some people on your bucket list that you would still like to meet one day or collaborate with? Uh, no. No, you've met everybody no. that you care to meet? Well, honestly, I, it's a weird thing that, you know, it's a, they, they say don't meet your heroes, and I don't think that that's really because your heroes are invariably going to turn out to be assholes. I think it's because you have such a, a, a picture, such an image of them, that there's no way that they can, and, and that's certainly true. I have, like, I, I'll tell you what, it's, we, we were in Portland, Oregon, and I was outside the bus in the morning, this is when I used to smoke, and I was, I was like on the phone, I think it was, I was talking to my wife, and I was having a dart, and it, was, it must have been 9 or 10 in the morning, and la la la, and, you know, it's just me, bus, club, sidewalk, having a smoke, I'm on the phone, and I look up and I recognize Dominic Miller. Sting's guitar player. I had the hair. I was like, holy shit. I was like, holy shit, that's Don Miller. <laughs> Who's that next? And it's Sting next to him. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're walking towards me. And I, knew, I already knew that he was at the, uh, whatever the, the Normo Dome or whatever. You know, uh -huh. I already knew Sting with him. And I was like, that's Sting. And, and he's maybe a block away. And he's walking towards me with Dominic Miller. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm, I'm, okay, what am I gonna say? You know, what can I say that's really gonna have him know how much he's impacted my life and what I do for a living and how much I love his art and how unfairly gifted I think he is as a musician. Mm -hmm. And just how, what a beautiful songwriter he is. And all these things, I'm just like, how can I, how can I just have it the most poignant? What's gonna have the most punch? And as he walked past me, what I came up with was the two fingers. So that's all I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me the old, yeah, how you do it? And he walked past. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, and then I go back on the bus and like, you're never gonna, and I just kind of shut up, and sat down, <laughs> thought about it. So yeah, I, but honestly, like any, any of the people who have influenced me like on that level, that you would think, oh, I'd want to collaborate with them. I wouldn't want to because I enjoy their stuff too much. You know, I wouldn't want to put my smell on their beauty. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and and I know it's not like that, but it's just I wouldn't want to hear any of my moves in their moves. I get. It. So yeah, it's not really like that. And and as far as meeting them, I think, yeah. <laughs> sure, I want to shake Jimmy Page's hand, but what mm. I'm gonna say, you're awesome. You know? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Are you going to be going to Nam again in January? Uh, we've been talking about it, yeah. Because we'll I be there. Know. I didn't awesome. know you were there. I was kind of, yeah, I was mad. Well, I wasn't actually at Nam. Is it, um, John uh, Seward does does their own sort of thing, just sort of off Nam. Mm. Uh, 
Because I and I didn't actually get to go to Nam. I, I still haven't been. I don't know what it's really like. I don't know if I'd like it to be honest. Because it sounds it's like crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it's over the top. I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. You know, I thought it's sort of like a kid in a candy store. But right. Yeah. The concerts are much. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. And then you, you're looking. Cool. There's that guy. There's that guy. The Randy Rhodes remembered is cool. Right on. Yeah. yeah no, I, I don't know if I handle it. I might explode. Mm. Um, but it is something that I want to uh, take in at some point. Uh, but no, John has his, and I think he sends buses and brings people into the sewer factory and gives them a whole experience. It, it was oh, is that great. where that was done at their factory? Yeah. Oh, oh, I yeah. see. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, I got to hang out with Scott Anderson and all these wonderful guitar players, and, and then you're just surrounded by the most beautiful guitars, amps. Everybody was just so nice. It was crazy. Yeah, I, uh, I find that a lot. That's why I love doing this because I think it's, everybody I've interviewed has been really awesome. All right. And you've been on my bucket list for a while. I bought my VIP sure. passes. We have our photos together and whatnot, but this is finally the first time I got to All interview you. Right. So I thank you very much. And what can um, your fans expect for 2015? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, just more of the same, more shows and, and yes. records and music. I mean, I have a lot of. We didn't have a very busy summer this summer, so I spent a lot of it writing. Um, and so I, yeah, I've got a lot of music that I that I want to sort of work on when I get downtime. And I think the summer is going to summer of 2015 is going to be pretty busy. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, yeah, I think we'll be playing a lot more shows. Hopefully later on, we get the studio and do a record. Great. There you have it, folks. Ian Thornley. Thank you very much. Cheers. Absolutely. All right.